this talk, we are going to hear from restoration site hosts, students, and teachers who will present on the collaborative role that each plays in the watershed program. And just to introduce some of these folks um, real quick, we have Justin Demeter from the McKenzie Watershed Council here to talk about the background a little bit. We've got some teachers over there, Mr. Gelfi, Mr. Loeb, and Ms. Wilson. <laughs> um, they're all each going to give a little bit of a presentation, and then we have some students that will contribute as well. So, what is WATERS? So it's a program that focuses on involving students with hands-on scientific environmental learning. It's team-oriented, it's field-based, um, it's a science program for middle school and also high school students um, in Lane County, though I only work on the, uh, the middle school portion. Justin's going to tell you a little bit more about the high school portion. Um, and we have, of course, um, a few goals that we try to work towards. Um, so some of those goals being increased collaboration among environmental educators, public agencies, and nonprofits. And we're going to hear more about all of that this evening. Develop field based watershed research and stewardship projects on both the high school and the middle school level. Um, then, the, like I said, there's the high school component that we'll hear a little bit more about, um, though we would like to expand to high school in the future, of course. Um, we identify and complete stewardship projects and monitoring projects for each waters team. Uh, promote understanding of scientific methods and protocols, critical thinking and problem solving. Promote student collaboration, leadership and peer-to-peer -peer learning. And prepare students for work in environmental fields and also we want to increase the diversity of student participants. There we go, that's more comfortable. Um, so throughout this presentation, I hope to show you how we're achieving many of these goals um, and that we've explained the basics of the program. So oh, I'm just going to pass it off to Justin here. He's going to tell us about some of the background. Right on, cool. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Justin Demeter. I am the Education Coordinator for McKenzie Watershed Council. And uh, thank you all for coming out here. And thank you to Coast Fork for having me out to speak to you all today. Uh, so, can everyone hear me in the back now? Okay, usually, at least my kids tell me I'm loud enough that I can be heard from quite a ways away. Uh, so, education program and kind of the uh, evolution of that throughout the years. In 2007, uh, Mackenzie Watershed Council recognized the need to integrate education and outreach with restoration. And maybe I shouldn't quite say the need, uh, but the benefits of that. So in 2007, they began the process of applying for different grants and uh, looking at different partnerships to try and integrate education. Uh, that led to, within that first year, when it actually kind of kicked off, which would have been right around 2009, there were approximately 200 students involved. Most of that work done by middle schoolers, uh, as is done with Coast Fork, uh, is performed at active restoration sites and includes a lesson each day. Uh, eventually, started to, to kind of expand a little bit. Uh, in 2012, we brought on Salmon Watch, uh, which some of you may be familiar with. That is an opportunity for students to come out, generally middle school students, sometime high school, uh, to come out for one day and uh, get some of the lessons that other students get throughout the year. So macroinvertebrates, plant ID, or, or repairing ecology, water quality, and fish biology. Uh, it's a one day shot for them. Uh, with that program, we started to engage somewhere around 1,200 students a year, maybe a little fewer given the year. Um, that eventually led to the implementation or the creation of some high school teams, which in partnership with Springfield Public Schools uh, perform work beyond removing invasives and planting natives. So to give you an idea of what they do, well, actually I'll move into that in a second, I guess. Um, 2012 through 2014, uh, you can see some of the numbers there. This is combined, uh, both middle school students and high school students spent a total of 132 days in the field, uh, 500 or 5,500 hours of uh, field time of working. So that could be anything from clearing invasives to receiving those lessons. Uh, approximately 3,000 plants and shrubs were planted in that period as well. Of those, you know, maybe 60% survived, but with no irrigation, that's kind of expected, and, and we're good with that. Um, one thing that has come up in the past, and I just kind of want to throw out there, especially for some of the students here, 
there's a perception sometimes that this is child labor. Uh, and yes, children are laboring, which is great. They're outside and getting things done. Uh, but in most of these projects, to some extent, it would be more cost efficient for us to hire a contractor, come out to do the same work. They will get three times as much done as the students. Um, it will all be done correctly more often than not, but getting the students out there and giving them the opportunity to do this hands-on, uh, it's priceless. I it's really priceless. Um, now, uh, so 2015, 2018, as we're going out for these grants and we're looking for money and we're trying to figure out, you know, what's out there, we started to see and, and recognize a uh, desire from a lot of our funders to look at a more regional approach. Uh, with that in mind and with our, our close relationship with Coast Fork already, uh, we decided that we would kind of uh, go get in cahoots with each other. Um, the dude, by the way, watching you. Um, <laughs> so uh, we started to apply, uh, in particular, an EPA grant uh, that provided money for us to uh, next year with Coast Fork expand our water quality testing programs with students and uh, to expand the, the restoration work that we do with middle schoolers. So kind of the, the, the real catalyst for making this happen, even though there was a lot of talk before, was the, the need that funders expressed to look at a more regional approach. Uh, I love those fadeaways. All right, so uh, teams that we work with at McKenzie Watershed Council, we have various high school teams. Uh, those are broken down into basically two subcategories. So we have our, our aquatic habitat survey teams. Those high school students, if any of y'all make it down there, um, or up there, I guess, uh, those high school students will go out for a day. They will hike streams. We will collect data on substrate, canopy enclosure, active channel. Um, and that data is actually used and shared with some of our partners like BLM, US Forest Service, for real world projects. Uh, it is a, uh, an absolutely amazing way to spend the day. I, I can guarantee you that. Uh, and we have teams at Thurston and Springfield High School. In the past, I've also worked with McKenzie High School on that, but recently we've made a transition with them to a water quality testing team. Our water quality testing teams we have at both Thurston and Springfield, as well as uh, Marcola or Mohawk High School and McKenzie High School. Those teams throughout the year meet once a month, uh, similar to the format of the middle schoolers here. They meet for once a month. We have set sites that we go to, on average, eight a day, and we will go and conduct uh, real-world water quality testing on everything from dissolved oxygen to nitrates, nitrites, uh, and bacteria, which is something that was new for us this year. So we're looking at E. coli and coliform. For any of you that have ever had to do anything with your wells, uh, you know that those tests are actually relatively expensive, I wouldn't say super expensive, but probably run you about 150, 200 bucks a pop. Students at Springfield High School have a program where you can bring in your well water and they will test it for you for free. Um, and I can say having worked with water quality in the past that the level of work that they do would be on par with anything that you would see from any professional. Give them a couple months from the beginning of the year to get to that point, but it only takes them a couple months and, and they're there. Uh, at the same time, all of these high school teams will also take that data, they'll compile it, they'll turn it into presentations, posters that they will then present to either the Watershed Council or various other partners. So not only are they learning how to collect this data, what that data means, they also get the experience of being able to show people how this data, you know, uh, how it's important and how do I present this to someone in a way that they'll understand what they're hearing, which for me is, is challenging. <laughs> Uh, these are the locations that we go to with Mohawk. So start out at Weyerhaeuser Gate, uh, make our way down all the way to Hayden Bridge. Again, this happens on non-school Fridays for Mohawk and McKenzie. These students don't have to be in school. They choose to be there. Uh, and we spend the entire day with them, and I usually provide pizza. <laughs> our water quality teams for McKenzie. Uh, they start all the way out to Carmen Smith, although our first class of the year, we will bring them up to Clear Lake, which are the headwaters for the McKenzie River, and we will then bring them down to give them an idea of what's happening in their watershed. But the sites that you see up here are tested on a regular basis. And again, those data sets are shared with people or partners like US Forest Service, EWEB, SUB, uh, so, it, so it really gets used. It's not just an exercise in, 
and futility for them. Uh, Springfield Water Quality teams, we have two teams. There's an urban complex team, and then we also have a team that works uh, a little further upriver, so South Fork area. And then our middle school restoration team. So this is a McKenzie watershed that you're seeing here. Kind of hard to tell because it's a rather large watershed. Uh, most students will work in the Daney and BWCA, or Bergen Watershed Conservation Area, which was where the Oregon Chub, the first freshwater fish delisted, the ceremony took place there. I might have gotten that answer right, I hope. Uh, Daney is another property that's a private landowner that allows us to come out there. And then Green Island and Finrock Reach are both owned by McKenzie River Trust, another one of our partners that we work with very closely. And students go out and perform work there as well. Everything for the middle school students, and keep this in mind, those of you that are here, culminates in the Restoration Olympics. Restoration Olympics, this is going to be the sixth year that we've had it. Uh, I believe when it started out, there were maybe 60, 70, 30 students, roughly. Um, we are now up to somewhere around 200, uh, or getting close to 200. Uh, some of them with their egos, definitely 200. Um, those, that's a day-long thing. Again, we provide pizza because there's no better way to bribe a kid than with pizza, as you all well know, right? Um, but they will compete in the things that they have been learning all year. So plant ID, bug ID, uh, fish ID, all of these things. They'll go out, they'll compete. Uh, we'll tally all their scores, and then we'll have winners that um, will have bragging rights for the next year. Uh, take it seriously for those that may not have been there before, because I guarantee you those other schools will. Guaranteed. And that's all I've got for you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. Uh, we I are in the process of that. That's Coast Forks thing. We're in the process, or they're in the process of that now. Uh, I know that we do have, for water quality teams, we're pretty well set with equipment, and so hopefully next year, but when it comes down to it, that's, that's their ball game. I'm, I'm in the wrong turf here. <laughs> All right, that was Justin Demeter, and he is the education coordinator for the McKenzie Watershed Council. And I should also mention that he is a mentor to me, and he trained me all throughout the 2016-17 school year. So, so much appreciation for you, Justin. <laughs> I, th I think you're a good influence on me, mostly, most of the time. <laughs> um, so our partnership with the McKenzie Watershed Council, like you guys already heard a little bit about already, has been very instrumental um, to the program. And Justin and I have worked very closely. Um, you know, I learned a lot of lessons from him, uh, shadowed him in the field to learn the lessons that um, how like logistics work and the curriculum for the Waters program. Um, so now I'm going to talk a little bit about the Coast Forks uh, middle school teams. So um, in the 2017-2018 school year, we successfully formed partnerships with area schools and we received grant funding to enable the expansion of waters to all the schools in the Coast Fork watershed. And these schools include Lincoln Middle School, Child's Way Charter School, London School, Dorena School, and Cresswell Middle School. And um, that means we're going to bring four more teams to Watershed Olympics this year. So we've got some competition coming, coming over to you, Justin. So you better watch out. In uh, 2016 is when we started the program. That was our pilot year with Lincoln Middle School. Um, but I'm not going to talk too much longer because I'm going to pass it on to our student, uh, Logan Merrick. Um, He's been an outstanding student for us throughout the year, throughout the two years of being in our Waters program. Um, the program is available to seventh and eighth graders at Lincoln Middle School and at Lincoln and both as well as at Cresswell, students apply for the program. So he was you know, well behaved enough and outstanding enough in his first year that we did choose him to come back um, to join us again. So I'm going to pass it on to you, Logan. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, thank you. There you go. Nice. Arrow keys? Okay. Okay. Here we go. 
Um, I am Logan Merrick. I am 14 years old. This is my second year doing um, the Waters program. Um, I, I, it's so much fun. You get to do so much things. You get to do macro invertebrates, fish ID, plants, and lots of other things you get to do. It's so much fun. Um, I joined the watershed um, program because it sounded like fun um, when I first heard about it. It sounded like fun um, um, since I'm interested in animals, especially aquatic life like fish, macroinvertebrates, um, other interesting stuff like that. Um, <laughs> um, I do care about um, the Rau River Nature Park, which is, if you, the first picture up there was the whole, um, um, that right there is um, about, probably about the center of the Rau River Nature Park. Um, I like that. It's a nice place. It's a nice fishing hole, too. Um, I do go there fishing whenever I can. I like to ride my bike down there if I can. Also, I do fish the, I do fish the Mackenzie, no, not the Mackenzie, the Coast Fork um, Willamette um, by... If you guys know like the old railroad bridge that was renewed, um, I do fish there occasionally with my cousin um, if he wants to go and if he's up for it. Um, I do, if you can't tell by now, I do love, um, I do like fishing a lot. So I do like to fish for trout, uh, mainly rainbow, but I will fish for like um, browns or kokanee or something like that. Um, I like to um, fish for steelhead and salmon as well. Um, now that I've been in watershed, I can more, I can, I guess I can more accurately tell if um, water quality is good enough to catch a trout or is too murky for visibility for lures or if you need to use scent or live bait like um, power bait or worms. Um, I do um, also like um, water temperature also is a big um, deal in all this stuff as well. Um, like if you want if you want to catch um, a trout, say um, you will need. It's uh, you want to go in like in the morning when it's cooler because trout like about I'd say maybe 20 30 feet of water cooler. Um, bass, on the other hand, which is something I also do like to go fishing for occasionally, they like they like warmer water. So like in the middle of th in the dead of summer, um, shallow waters and you will slam them. Um, I like to do I g I like to go. If I want, if I'm fishing for bass, I like to go um, Wilson Creek. If you, any of you guys know where that is, um, in Cottage Grove Lake, which is a good fishing hole for both trout and bass. Also, um, also, um, also, if I'm like fishing and I catch something other than a trout, I can more accurately tell what it, what fish it is, because I've learned a lot of the invasive, um, native, and non-native species which there is a difference between a native and invasive, sp a non-native and invasive species, which basically an invasive species is a aggressive um, species that takes over native populations of, so say like a trout, and I don't really know anything that would be not native to, but would take over a trout population and not be able to recover efficiently. Um, I also, and I have multiple times um, went trolling um, for salmon out. Um, if you guys know like where Winchester Bay is, it's kind of like, it's, I don't know, it's, I guess it's sort of by Newport maybe, but it's kind of like in that area maybe. Um, but maybe a little bit more south than that, I don't really know. But um, I do know that salmon do need fresh water to spawn because the, um, the smolts like to, um, like to live in the river for about three to four years. So they're not th there's not as many predators as in there are in the ocean. Why they need to go in the ocean instead of like just staying in the rivers because since they're such big fish, they're going to need to like they're going to need to feed for a couple of years before they're ready to spawn. So they like to get fat and like so they can um they can make the long trek up the river and you know not die of starvation. So which is always that's always a good thing for fish. Um, why I reapplied for a second year is because I, I, like I said before, I love the program. It's a lot of fun. Um, 
my favorite parts of this are um, fish identification because you um, you get to learn about fish, which is my favorite part of it. You also get to dissect fish, which is m very very fun. Um, Macroinvertebrates, which are very very interesting. If you don't know what a macroinvertebrate is, it's basically a um, a macroinvertebrate is a um, is a kind of like a I guess it could be technically a crustacean, depending on which one it is. But it's a species of um, kind of like maybe like a water bug. I don't really know what you would consider it. It is a um, vi it's visible with the naked eye, but it has no um, backbone. Um, I also like getting doing water quality and um, taking a tour. One of my favorite things was taking a tour of the water treatment plant because um, it, it was interesting how like how you get your city water cleaned and how it's like it's actually interesting how many chemicals they use which in in <coughs> mixtures actually makes it safe when if it if it was just like in purely it would be very dangerous which is interesting how they moderate that and you know make your water safe to drink um i guess um stewardship stewardship highlights and s stuff like that was a lot of fun what a stewardship is it's basically a kind of like a I guess you would put it like a project, at least in our case, restor restoring or doing stuff to help um, Route River Nature Park do um, become, I guess, like like we planted lots of native stuff. We planted some willows, about 30 willows, and um, I think it was, no, 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 it was 15 willows and 15 red dogwoods. Um, we planted, um, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, we planted them our first year of the 16, 17 year. Um, I don't know if we have any pictures up there, but if we do, they're in like little plant protectors. Yeah, um, next, the next presenter, Anna Marie, will, uh, I'm sure will show you pictures of those because that was one of her favorite things to do. Um, this year, our main search project this year was definitely pulling um, English ivy. <laughs> it was, there's um it's it's a it's considered an invasive species because it takes over the sunlight of um young trees and um old trees alike they're um it wraps around the trees it can be very annoying to take off <laughs> and especially if there's big roots cuz uh let's just say they don't come out of the ground very easily but <laughs> last year our main focus stewardship wise was um mulching which mulching is very, very, very good for the trees because they um, you basically you make a you make a donut around it, which a prevents as many weeds from growing up near the plant, taking away its sunlight. Also, they um, it basically it bi it provides nutrients because once the like the leaves or the dirt whatever decomposes, it provides lots of nutrients for the um for the roots and um also like moisture the um the leaves or whatever is collected will also come in handy if it's like a young if it's like a young tree it'll be able to take in a lot easy nutrients a lot easier and that's pretty much it so oh yeah that's right um i forgot about these stuff yeah <laughs> also um so like i said before you do the you be do donuts I, for, like I said, right oh, right here we do have a plant protector. So if you see over here, that's the stuff that we planted last year. Um, it is, it is like it's basically how you mulch is you put two full buckets around it. Um, I think it's like you give the plant a couple, three, four inches maybe of space, so like it has room to grow. And after that, um, but we all were making jokes, hey, because um, um, Maggie told us to plant them like um, plant them like donuts because that was like at the time probably the easiest thing to think of and then after that we decided for being for working as hard as we did we should get donuts and we got we got a lot of donuts <laughs> and this is my my at least my last slide this is um, that picture is me of on the Umqua River catching a I'd say maybe 15, 16 um, inch steelhead of mine. Um, it was a lot of fun to catch. It was it was fighting pretty hard, but I mean I think that's that's about it. So.
Well done, Logan. Thank you so much. And like I said, he's been in the program with us for two years. He's been a great member of the Waters team. And, you know, I'm going to miss these guys next year when they're gone. I hope we can get students as good as they are to replace them. Um, and, and Logan, you know, best of luck in high school. You're always welcome to come back and visit us. Come to Waters Club, maybe. Um, so now I'm going to pass it on. And he, he's got to go because he's got to go to bowling. So <laughs> I told him he could just pass the mic off and take off. So thank you. So our other student who's been in the program for two years is Anne Marie Barlow. And I'm going to pass it off to her. And she's going to tell us uh, some more of the basics about how you would participate in the Waters program. Um, so I'm just going to pass it on to you, Emery. Uh, hey guys, my name is Anne Marie Barlow, and I am 13 years old. This is my second year of Watershed, and I am an eighth grader. Honestly, my opinion, Lincoln Middle School is my favorite middle school I've been to, and uh, um, as you can tell in the first photo, that was our first year and we were planting our dogwoods and our plants that year and putting plant protectors around them, which was very difficult sometimes. Um, the second photo is me trying to get a English ivy root out of the ground so it doesn't keep growing and growing up the tree. And I was very determined to get out it out of the ground and like I request so many times to do this project and usually Maggie will say no we have a lesson to do or next time we'll do um, next time class we'll do it and um, and this photo we did a little survey about fish and that is actually my best friend Michaela and that was her first year which I kind of got her into watershed. Um, what I did during school was do class presentations to recruit sixth graders for next year and seventh graders if they're interested in watershed and I will go from sixth grade science classes to seventh grade and eighth grade science classes, which seventh and eighth graders are combined together. And at the end of the presentations, I would hand out applications to people who wanted th the applications. In the beginning, I would pass out brochures so if they had any questions about what Watershed was, they could either listen to the pro presentation or look at the brochures and um, we to pre bleh, <laughs> to prepare for the field trips out to the Rowell River Nature Park um, you had to be prepared for the College Grove weather and um, you had to be prepared for like colds or raining or like really hot out. So what I usually do was just check the weather every morning on watershed days and then get dressed for that day. Usually I'll just wear like a sweatshirt, t-shirt, and jeans or any kind of pants. And if it's like raining that day, I'll bring an extra pair of shoes for school. And you also want to bring snacks and lunch because <laughs> usually we're there for the whole day. We actually get excused um, during first period at 8.40 and we board the bus at 8.45. Then we usually do our lessons projects and all that kind of stuff there until like 1.56 is when we usually get back to school. And um, some of the water activities that we did was like help uh, learning how to help with the turtles. And we actually did a survey on the turtles and how we could uh, help prevent them from dying. And we had uh, Allison who helped us and she was a 
pro slash professional at the Turtles. And it was amazing for her to come down and actually help us learn about the Turtles. Um, we uh, split up into two teams, and one of us will go with Allison, one of us will go with Maggie and Miss Wilson, and uh, we went to different parts of the park and see who could see the most turtles. The m and this year we didn't see that much because it was like kind of cold and they like to come out when it's like really warm out. And uh, last year we actually saw like 12 turtles in total. And um, for the Olympics, one of the races that we did was mulching. And that was one of my favorite things to do because I've actually been a part of the LM LMS track and field team, which we won districts this year, which I'm very happy. <laughs> and um, uh, last year, we won districts too. This year, hopefully, we will win state, hopefully. <laughs> and um, the first photo is me carrying a bucket of mulch and as you can tell in the background there's the rest of our team from last year filling up the buckets and we have to like run down to the people who are making the donuts as fast as we can so I was one of the tough runners who would carry at least one or two buckets full and I run as fast as I can then dump them and take like the empty ones back in the second photo um, we got donuts again this year because me <laughs> and uh, another one, uh, Jordan Sunkler, which is over there, uh, he actually helped me pay for the donuts this year. And we each paid five bucks and we gave the money to Maggie and she had everyone else pay a dollar to each of us, <laughs> which was kind of fun. So I had just some money in my pocket, but I ended up like spending it on <laughs> stuff. Um, I, last year, it was like a comp donut eating competition kind of thing between me and Logan, and unfortunately, he won. And I only ate three and a half donuts last year, last, and he ate seven and a half, I think. <laughs> this year, I didn't eat that much. I ate like two and a half, and he ate sort of four and a half. <laughs> he still won. <laughs> um, and you can't always forget to have fun when you're there. This photo is our last year's win, our last year's team, and I'm in the corner just giving thumbs up for our hard work. And we planted, I think, 35 <laughs> plants last year. And so one day was planting them. And then like our next class, which was the next month, the second Tuesday, and we put plant protectors around them. So thank you. <laughs> thank you, Anne Marie. Very well done. And we'll miss you next year too. Thank you so much for all your hard work and continuing to promote watershed class at school. She's helping us recruit everyone for next year. So I can only hope that we get more track players <laughs> to help run and everything. Um, so now I'm going to welcome Miss Wilson up really quick. Um, she's just going to say a few things about how the Waters program has impacted Lincoln Middle School. I can't say I've ever talked in a mic before. Hello, hello. <laughs> Hi. Um, I'm going to keep it really brief. This is an amazing opportunity for my students They're at LMS. And I am so proud of my students. They have shown so much leadership. They have come together as a team, as a social group. They've supported each other in and out of waters. And they get this great opportunity to see careers. They get to see biologists at work. They get to hear from them, learn from them. Um, I'm just so proud of them. So this uh, program has been amazing. And Maggie's awesome. 
So <laughs> oh, thank you. I didn't follow my script. No, that's that's all good. It's just another quick slide. We had pictures of them planting the oak tree at Raw River Nature Park and um, some of the different guest experts that come to our class. So Department of Fish and Wildlife and Allison talks about turtles, like Anne Marie said. Um, the water treatment plant tour, and we've even seen restoration crews working out there, and that's been a really good experience for the students. So I'm just going to talk really quick about Child's Way Charter School, which is another school that participates in our program. Um, we take the classes at Child's Way up to Rajada Campground, which is the where the arrow is pointing to on our watershed map. Um, Child's Way is located up Route River Road. Um, way above Dorena Dam, and Child's Way was actually the first school to s to join our Waters program, thanks to a parent um, who was who had a child there, and is, she's involved with the Watershed Council, so she kind of got us jump started. Um, at Child's Way, we take fifth through eighth graders, just because of the way that school is <coughs> configured. We take the fifth through eighth grade, um, and some of the activities that they do up at Rujeda Campground. Um, thankfully, there's not a huge invasive species problem there, um, so the students do get an opportunity to see a lot of different native plants, like the trilliums that bloom in the early spring. There's just tons and tons of them to look at, and it's that's a really nice experience. But we've worked on removing invasive Himalayan blackberry, and we've planted thimbleberry, and we've done a sword fern trail survey, and that's contributed to the Forest Service. Um, Mr. Gelfi is going to talk a little bit more about that. And we've partnered with um, the Army Corps of Engineers. Um, Doug Garlitz, who is a district fish biologist for the Army Corps, also is a student who goes to Child's Way. So he is just a natural fit to help us with our fish lesson there. And then U.S. Forest Service is our other partner because they are the hosts of our site. Um, just to go over really quick the lessons that we cover throughout the year. Uh, watershed basics is our first day. Then we do a lesson on riparian ecology and soil science as well as twig identification. That's usually our November lesson. Then we take a do our water quality lesson sometime in December. We do macroinvertebrates in January. We also do a fish identification lesson and leaf identification lesson. And there, then we have another day that typically is a review where we spend our last day of class talking about Watershed Olympics and going through all of our lessons again. Um, and then we give another day that's kind of a flex day because you never know, we might have a cancellation due to weather. So, so now I'm going to welcome Mr. Nick Loeb. He's our teacher from London School, and he's going to tell you guys about the London School Project. All right. So that's the group of, uh, I think the next slide is actually goes through. So that's, that's the group of kids. Um, and we had a total of 16 students. So it's 7th and 8th grade, 12 through 14. Uh, this number did fluctuate a lot uh, with our uh, program this year. It kind of went between, I guess I said, 14 and 16 there. So that's the group we ended with up there on the top on our stewardship project. And I'm going to talk mostly just about the stewardship project we did because we did the same lessons that Maggie was just talking about. Uh, London School is located um, in a perfect area for a watershed, um, for a waters program. We're on the uh, Coast Fork Willamette River. It runs uh, borders the school. And then we also have the Cottage Grove uh, Lake just a couple miles up the road. Um, yeah. So our stewardship project was to restore an area next to the river um, to its natural setting uh, before the invasive Himalayan blackberry came in. Um, and that's two of the students with uh, one plant they planted. Uh, this is what the area looked like before we got started on it. Actually, that one on the right is a little bit after we did some work. But those two on the left kind of show how uh, jungled in it was. We basically had like this narrow little trail to the river that really couldn't, the river really couldn't be used very much because of it. Um, and then we started clearing the blackberry, which turned out to be a good lesson in uh, persistence for the students. Uh, it's a very difficult task. Uh, I did not enjoy it at times as well, because ripping them out by the roots so they don't come back is pretty challenging. So that's the same area all ripped up of all the blackberry. And then we started, once we ripped it all out by the roots, started putting in uh, plants. Um, and we were able to uh, mulch them and help them get protected for the summer. 
So that's why they're all kind of protected that way. And then this is what the area looks like now. So it's pretty great transformation of the uh, area near, near the school. We are able to, I'll kind of get to this slide, and that's it as again as well on the bottom there. Um, but it you know, lets us use the river again. It also allows uh, the other grades, we have K through five at the school as well, come down to the river. Um, there are native plant species, so the students in the lower grades are now able to go down there and identify some plants that are native to the area. And um, yeah, I just think it gives the students an opportunity to give back to the school. Uh, the schools get something uh, from it as well, and then it's also better for the environment of the uh, river, or the, eco the microsystem of the river there. So yeah, it's been great. Thanks, Maggie. Thank you so much. It's, it was actually a really great experience for me to do like little mini restoration planning because I got to pick out all the plants and picked out plants that would provide pollination, habitat for, habitat for pollinators, nectar, different colors of um, blooms and everything like that. Um, and we Riley recommended that we plant a little more trees, but I um, ended up not doing as many trees there because we wanted to maintain some of the visibility of the river in that site um, and be able to have a nice trail where kids can get down to the river. So now I would like to welcome Mr. Gelfi to talk about Darina School. Oops. There you go. Thank you very much. My name is David Gelfi. I'm the middle school teacher at Darina School. And this is our lovely ancient old school here. So a lot of people don't really you know, understand what Darina School is. And uh, Darina School is a K-8 school, all blended classrooms, k kindergarten, first grade, second, third, fourth, fifth, and I teach a sixth, seventh, and eighth blend. 100% uh, free lunch, which ref reflects our overall poverty level. So we're not the richest kids in the world. Uh, it's a very family atmosphere because of that. And about 50%, 60% come from upriver, and the rest all come from here in Cottage Grove. So it gives you an idea about our blend. And how does it work? Blended six, seven, eight. I said that 17 to, 18, 17 to 19 students on average. We do the same curriculum as the big school downtown, but we don't have science facilities. So I get a classroom. I don't have sinks. I don't got Bunsen burners. I don't got any of that neat science stuff. And this is where Waters really comes to the rescue for us. So my personal learning objectives for my kids when we started this was, first of all, in biology, ecology, to increase their exposure to hands-on lab. Since I don't really have a lab stuff, to, to do really nice science labs, that's a, that's, a, that's a deficit. And so we do things like this to really um, make it more real and get them out there in the world and have real lab experiences. So we're out of the classroom, and the out of the classroom experience reinforces everything we do in textbook in the class. Stewardship, we need to teach the value and need of volunteer stewardship programs. That's the hardest part, I think, uh, as Nick can probably attest to, is teaching these kids, I'm not making them work. They're not free labor. We're investing in our future. And so after the first three or four, they kind of figured that out. There was less complaining and more like, well, what are we going to do to save this place kind of an attitude. So it was really nice to see that happen. Um, and increasing their experience hands-on. We did all these different labs, which you guys heard about already. So we're doing tree and leaf identification, macroinvertebrates, water quality testing, fish biology, definitely the most popular. Uh, and let's look at some of what we did. So here's a nice little photo essay of what us doing stuff. So this is our water quality testing. Kids are hands-on, using chemicals, using test tubes, figuring out how to do this stuff for real, real comparisons of what the results were. Don't always focus, but it's close enough. And then we also got down to the river. And we're up at Regeta Campground, so it's beautiful. We're way up in the mountains. Our, our river is just pretty much pristine. And so we're catching fish. We're dissecting fish. Kids are in heaven. They get to do all this kind of stuff. And watch some of these expressions on the face here. These are kids who are not excited about science in class. But here, they're really jacked. So they're doing all their work, exploring. This, these kids are not class leaders, and they are leading this kind of stuff. This is really fun. And we have real professionals in here showing us how to do it. Yes, she's enjoying herself immensely. And even, you know, kids everywhere from kids who are, you know, in special ed all the way up to kids who are in TAG. So we're doing everything here. And just because 
here in special ed does not mean you're not an excellent person of fish and animals and things like that. Sometimes my lowest kids are the best ones on ha with hands-on experience. Um, this is us up at Big Stewart Park where we had a nice little uh, event up there and the Army Corps of Engineers came out and we also were lucky enough to get the Sentinel and the Register Guard to come out and watch us do a little something which I'll tell you about here in a second. So rolling through, enjoying ourselves. I have one kid who's a, uh, a lizard, a, a a lizard whisperer, that's what I want to say. All the lizards will come to this kid and sit on him. And so our first uh, stewardship project that I want to talk about is our Sword Fern Survey Trail. This is the first big one we did where we had the kids go out and we were looking for places where the culverts are no longer passing the water underneath the trail. They've plugged up and the trail is washing out. And so you can see at the bottom right here we have a washed out trail and the kids on the right hand side got a nice satellite GPS meter and they're putting down their GPS coordinates I just heard that um, the Job Corps is trying to put together a uh, cohort to come up and actually do this, uh, fixing this over the summer. So, but if you look at those faces and these kids, they're really having a good time. It was really cold. We're hiking hard. A lot of this was cold. We also did pollinator planting at Regeta. We had nice um, forest service and fish and wildlife people helping us throughout this entire project. All hands on. It wasn't always easy. Maggie's there with us, making it awesome. Um, Oregon grape planting at Big Stewart Park. We found out that people were basically stealing the Oregon grapes. They're coming by, clipping them, pulling out the roots, and using the roots uh, to make um, a, medicinal, a medicinal salve that they're selling on the market. Oregon grape grows everywhere. You don't need to come into my park and steal it. Um, you can probably find it in places that are fully legal to get, but they're stealing it out of our parks. So we went and planted 40 Oregon grapes. We did it in about an hour, because my kids know how to dig holes really well. And then we learned more about, um, oh, we're still planting here, sorry. We also got rid of a bunch of scotch broom. Scotch broom is an invasive species. It's all over the park. We went through and clipped it all out, bagged it, tagged it, got rid of it. And it wasn't all work the whole time. Regina has a playground, so you know lunches were, were enjoyable. And uh, I think everybody had a really great time, so I was really happy. And Maggie made it wonderful, and I just got to say thanks to Coast Fork. Um, and before I go, I want to tell you one other thing about, uh, two things about Darina. First thing is we're in the process of uh, being approved for a DIAC grant. And if anybody here has ever heard of DIAC, DIAC gives uh, money from the Oregon Community Fund to schools to do science. And we're applying for, I just got the word that it's not there yet, but you're going to get approved for a $6,000 DIAC grant. It's going to be K through 8. And what we're going to be looking at is how do the uh, heavy metals coming out of the Bohemia mines affect everything in the ecology or the ecosystem of the Coast Fork Basin. So we're going to be looking at the Rau River Basin. We're going to be looking at the Mosby Creek Basin. We're going to be looking at the, what's the other one called, the Upper Creek Basin? Upper the Upper Coast Fork Basin, which is kind of our control because that one doesn't come out of the mines. And we're going to be doing everything. Plants, animals, we'll have camera traps, we'll be water quality testing. It's going to be wonderful, a full year of doing this. And then the second thing I want to mention is if you have any kids, fourth grade through seventh grade, who are really into rockets and aerodynamics, myself, my partner, uh, Laura Frederick here, will be hosting a camp at Darina from the 25th to the 28th. It's going to be free, but I only got about 17 spots. So if your kids are into it, all you got to do is drop them off, pick them up, and we're going to be launching rockets and having a really good time. So thank you very much. So now I want to introduce you guys um, to Emily Higley, who is one of the landowners that we work with, with Crestwell Oaks, which is our flagship site for the Crestwell Middle School. So take it away, Emily. <laughs> As Maggie said, my name's Emily, and I'm the speaking representative for the Salyers family. And we are the flagship site for Crestwell Middle School, and this was our first year um, doing the waters program out there. So we didn't really know what to expect, but we all agreed it was a really fun experience, and we're excited to continue it in the future. Um, the ranch was historically known as the Christensen Ranch, and it's located south of Eugene, between Eugene and Cresswell. And um, 
or I'm sorry, south of Spencer Butte between Eugene and Cresswell. And currently we actively run cattle and it's also a certified tree farm. So we do kind of a variety of things out there. Um, our family's been on the property since 1993 and currently there's three generations of us living out there. So we have a lot of fun. Um, over the last couple years, we've really been working hard to form partnerships with different agencies that can help aid us in some of our restoration and conservation work, and that's what actually led us to the Watershed Council. Oops. There's four miles of stream that run through the property, and with the cattle grazing, we really wanted to get that fenced and try to do some things to improve the preservation of that area and um, just figure out what can we do better? So in 2016, the Coast Fork to help us get funding for phase one of a stream restoration project. And that kind of evolved into the waters site in 2017. So this is the class site where the kids were this year and it's a half mile of stream that's currently enro enrolled with CREP and OWEB. And you can see the October of 2016, that's before any anything had been touched and then June 2017 there'd been some spraying and a little bit of work done and then this is this month um, and the kids helped with these plantings and placing the tubes and so just kind of a cool comparison of what it was like before and then what the kids were getting their hands on and all their hard work. So 15 students a month um, activities very similar with all the other schools. They planted the willow cuttings that the Lincoln Middle School students cut. So that's kind of cool to see the follow up from that. Um, planting oak trees, collecting and planting acorns. They helped with the OEB and the CREP funded crew that came and did um, the big planting. That was a huge, huge help. Um, planted a pollinating area. And they also got to do fish biology with Brian Banks from the ODFW. So some pictures of the willow stakes being planted. Several hundred stakes planted in total. Yeah, over 450 willow stakes. I think they did it three different days that they came out. Yeah. More pictures. Kind of the end result. I don't have any pictures of today, but I noticed today when I drove by, lots of little green sprouting off, so they're doing well. It's a success. Um, this is the Krupp OWEB planting day. Oregon grape, white oak, ocean spray, piper's willow, tall Oregon grape, Oregon ash, and snowberry. Um, this is the Rosario Franco restoration crew, and that's Ivan, and he was awesome. He did a really good job showing the kids how to plant and explaining all the different things that they were doing and even made my little four-year-old get out there and work a little bit. <laughs> the kids planting, placing the tubes. That was a much bigger project than any of us anticipated. There's the class with some of the crew guys. And this is the after picture. So quite a difference over the last year. And this was, this was my favorite day. Um, all the kids said this was their favorite day too. They got to pull traps and do electro fishing with Brian. He came out the day before and set some traps. And he actually, you'll see in this top, it's the bottom right picture actually. He had planted a carp the night before, so when they pulled it up, there was this big fish, and they just thought that was the coolest thing. So we kept that on the DL and let them just enjoy the shock factor, but um, the kids named it Gale. <laughs> Gale was the high point of the class for sure. Class mascot. Yeah. More Gale. And then with the electro fishing, that was really awesome. He let all the kids wear the pack, so everybody got a chance to shock the stream and see what floated up to the surface. Couple little fun things. <coughs> everybody used the pack. 
Um, so this is the creek before the work was done, and this is what it looks like as of this month. So big difference, and we're really excited now because both sides of the stream are fenced. So we have had cattle in these two pastures, and it's really awesome to see them right up against that fence line, but they're not getting in the creek. They're not drinking out of it. They're not crossing through. So it's cool to get to see things really starting to get impacted and take shape. And just to know that the kids... You know, they planted these things this year, but over the next few years, we're really going to see it take off, and it's going to be a lasting result. It's not just, it wasn't just a one and done thing. It's going to be there for years to come. And there's the kids, who were all fantastic, by the way. Um, and Maggie asked me to just share from our family's perspective why waters, why do we want to be involved? And the bottom line is that kids are the future. Um, what they're learning now is setting them up for their futures and the decisions that they make and what they want to do going forward. And so promoting stewardship education is really exciting to us and it's important. Um, gives an opportunity to get out of the class, get hands in nature, especially since it's such a technology dominated world and screen time and all of that. It's cool to see kids out enjoying and having fun. My kids and I love it too. We tagged along for quite a few of the classes. Um, it's helpful to our family as we have working lands, but we're also really concerned about the conservation aspect of things and doing some of these restoration projects. So having kids come out and get their hands involved and be excited about it kind of fuels that excitement for us. And we're currently pursuing our second section of creek restoration, so it's going to be fun to see things just continue to expand and um, having more opportunities to work with Maggie and Waters in the future. So yeah, I think that's it. Thank you, Emily. She's due anytime, so we're just so happy that you were able to do this for us and I really look forward to working with you guys in the future next year coming out with the kids and seeing all the changes that take place on your property it's going to be really really fun and exciting um, so just to kind of wrap things up here um, basically um, the takeaways are that this this program uh, meets the next generation science standards it builds an awareness of local ecology with students it introduces them to scientific methods because we do surveys um, and monitoring projects and other things like that uh, we learn how to evaluate the success of a restoration project because on each scale at each of my classes we're doing restoration of some sort um, it definitely exposes them to different careers in the environmental field. Um, so that's exciting for all the students to see what's out there and as they go into high school and, and, um, and onward, it's good information for them. Of course, being outdoors and like Emily said, getting away from some of that screen time, getting that social experience um, that they may not be getting in the classroom, uh, building that teamwork, and um, with students who participate back-to-back -back years, we provide that as an opportunity, and then those students get a great experience of kind of taking a leadership role in class, and you definitely see that happen. Um, and reinforcing collaboration and partnerships, because as you guys all know now, after seeing this presentation, we work with a lot of different people um, across the landscape over the watershed, and so we have a lot of partners, and, and everyone works together to get this stuff done. Um, and also, it empowers students to make a, make a difference. So, and I think we're really seeing that at, at some of the sites. You know, the, the plants are growing out there at London School, and we'll, you know, everything going on at the Cresswell Oak site. So a lot of good things are coming out of this. Um, just to touch a little bit on some of our funding. So when we launched in 2016, these were our funders, the McKenzie Watershed Council, Eugene Water and Electric Board, Banner Bank, the Bureau of Land Management, and the City of Cottage Grove. Then we expanded in the fall of 2017. So we brought some additional funding on. Um, as in we were working really hard applying for grants and um, and, w and then waiting <laughs> to for them to be approved. So Environmental Protection Agency, EWEB, Gray Family Foundation, and the Watershed Enhancement Board. 
And so our current funders, kind of as of right now, um, some are the same, some have changed a little bit, and then our supporters as well. So the City of Cottage Grove, City of Cresswell, EPA, Gray Family Foundation, continuing with the McKenzie Watershed Council, Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife, who supports us with so many of our fish lessons. Catherine Nordholm was in a lot of those pictures you guys saw, and she came out to three of our classes with Doug Garlitz coming to the other and Brian Banks to Cresswell. Um, Oregon Watershed Enhancement Board, the Celeste Tribal Charitable Contribution Fund, the Spirit Mountain Community Fund, and then Army Corps and Forest Service, who are hosts and partners as well. Um, oh, and I should also point out that um, it, you know, it might seem like we have quite a lot of support and funding, which, which we do, but a couple of those funders in particular have stopped funding watershed education, so we're hoping that we can fill some of those gaps by applying for additional grants, but also with community support from folks such as yourselves. So if you're interested in contributing at all to the watershed program, just let us know. I'm sure we can, we can work something out. Um, we would love to have your support and your help, and hopefully now that you've got seen this presentation and learned more about this program, hopefully you are more willing to get invested in it in some way, shape, or form. So we would appreciate that, of course. And finally, I wanna give a thank you to all of the teachers who have worked with me throughout the years. So you've had to put up with me, of course. Um, and I've learned so much from you guys. You guys have been mentors to me throughout the, throughout the years. Miss Wilson, who I've worked with for two years straight and a whole year with Mr. Galfi. Um, and then also Alyssa Larson and Anna Baltrich who haven't, uh, weren't able to be here tonight, but nonetheless, um, they have all worked so hard and contributed to this program and it wouldn't be possible without them. So I have some little um, gifts of appreciation I would love to give to you guys. And that's all. So if you guys have any questions or comments or feedback, please let us know. We can take a few questions. Or if there's no questions, that's fine too. But. <laughs>